we're going to go deep in our heart. I want you to find that very special space in your heart and open the doors or the windows, however you see it. Open them wide and wider because Kryon has a lot of love that he wants to put in there right now. You feel it pouring in. You feel your heart beaming. Your heart chakra is growing. The light is growing. You breathe it in and release. And while you're in your heart, I want you to go to one cell, one tiny cell. And when within that cell, you're going to see your DNA. You're going to see a strand or a loop of DNA. And you'll notice that it's covered. It's covered with a, a ribbon, a gauzemere ribbon. And it's a little gray. And it's a little ratty. But now I want you to take the end of that ribbon and start to unfurl it around that loop of DNA. Because we're awakening more strands. We're awakening all 12 strands of your DNA tonight. Pull it across, pull it apart. See it unraveling unfurling around and around and exposing exposing that loop that strand is coming off and as you you start to notice that new brand new strand new to you in your view is glistened with drops of dew. It is so fresh, so awakened. And as we continue, we finish it up and we see that ribbon drops away. It's gone. And you're seeing that loop, that strand of DNA. And you notice how all 12 strands are there. You are whole. You are in your divine essence. You are ready. You're ready now to receive those words that wisdom that's coming to us tonight. And we feel that. We just admire that DNA, our DNA, for just a moment. It looks so beautiful. It's so radiant. It's glistening. It may be gold, it may be silver, it may be multicolored. there for you. And now, we know it's time to come back. And we start to come away from our heart, leaving the doors open to feel the, the love and the message from Cry on tonight. And we're coming back a little bit more coming back into our being ever so softly ever so gently be very kind to you and bring it in it's coming in and you're coming back back to this room so that you'll be here refreshed revitalized and ready to hear those words 
for the next voice you shall hear will be that of Cryon. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. There are those who say, well, the transition was too quick. It takes longer than that, and they say, for a human being to cross the bridge. For my partner simply sits down and begins, and they say, it's too quick. There should be more preparation. There should be something more profound when you go from 3D to multiple D. And it is the subject of the channeling of the evening. For some years now, I have given my partner glimpses of the quantum state that he must teach. For this shift that you are in demands that you start thinking differently, asking different questions about your path, your life, seeing your part on the earth differently, looking at the very instructions you get from spirit differently, looking at why you exist differently. You might say it is a complete and total deconstruction of those bars that are around certain thinking processes in your brain. And psychologists will tell you it is the most difficult thing to do to change a paradigm of thought. In fact, they will say it's impossible for, for a nation that hates to suddenly stop hating. We're going to break that paradigm too. <laughs> You're going to see consciousness shift against all odds. But it must start with light workers learning their biases. Things that they did never, never had to think about before in this fashion. My partner sits in the chair and immediately channels. It's because the bridge doesn't have to be crossed anymore. He has one foot in my side of the veil, which is really not my side at all. It's his side for the peace of God that is in him. He straddles a line that is not that difficult to straddle. He walks a walk that isn't that difficult to walk because he's learned what it's like to be partially quantum. Not so that he sticks out in the real world as abnormal, but that he sticks out in the real world as something special. With a love quotient that's different from others, one who is quick to forgive does not judge and sees the world and those around him differently than he did when he started. This is what we speak of. And so it is that I say to him now that what follows in its briefness or its length is a model for what I wish him to begin his lecturing on next year. And that he has been slowly growing into this and now it's time to just begin to identify it and teach it. And it must be done in ways that are incremental and with steps. It may seem odd that becoming quantum has to be taught with steps <laughs> because it is an oxymoron. 
That is to say, that becoming quantum is something that has no steps. And so we say to you, it is logical, is it not? And to move to three dimensions to more than three, you must start at three. You must show the human being what their biases are, things that they never thought they were. And we use the term bias on purpose. That may be a negative word to you. I hope it is. For this is an explanation of how you think. It's an old energy you're in, in thought process. And you're not going to get much farther in the shift in this new energy without an adjustment, a willing adjustment to become just a little more quantum. Quantum is a word we will use that describes a kind of state of reality that your physicists have also described. One which you are literally one with all, where there is no time, where everything is at once in a circle and difficult to understand. If you were on my side of the veil, the side you came from, that is the state we're in. It is why we have no problem with patience, dear ones. Who do you know who was a friend of yours? who has no trouble with patience at all. They are partially quantum. <laughs> and you can be. And some of you are, and that is to say that there are pieces and parts of the way you think that are all ready to go, and some which are not. And so for me to explain this, I start with the bias. Everything I'm going to give you this day has been given at some time before pieces and parts over two years It is the first time we have put it together succinctly in this way as a lesson plan For my partner The bias of 3d thinking is upon you Human beings are singular to the max Everything you have is singular and you don't even think that is odd. You have one body. In your mind, in three dimensions, that one body is that which you get up in the morning and look at. That body is the one that you create as a temple of biology. And you deal with it until the end. And that is 3D thinking and it's completely and totally wrong. But that's all you can see. The corporal structure is all that you have. It's all that you feel when you're born. It isn't until you begin to expand that that you start to see the rest of the story. And we'll give that to you in a moment. You are singular. One name. Not many. As you move through life, you have one time frame that is singular there is one direction of time there is only one kind of time and that is what we've said forward you cannot move backwards and the speed at which you move is set and you cannot change it it is singular it supports all the other singular parts that you have it's a bias it's a bias because it defines you in a reality you believe is the only reality. That's a bias. There are many realities. Three dimension is one. But this is the dimensionality that you have been existing in since the beginning. So it is etched into your brain and into your akash, into humanity, into all that is. And now we're asking you to get out of it. You think there is one way to God. So does the rest of the earth. Just ask them. Many ways and only one works. As though God were the same. As though there were one ladder to climb and only one ladder to climb. You hope you're on it. Dear human being, that's not from God. That's from a singular mind that is biased. 
We have said it before. What if, just what if, always lead the same place, to the end, to the finish line, to celebration? What if there is no judgment of what you believe that goes against linear thinking, does it not? You're going to find very few belief systems on the planet, very few indeed, that would give you that parameter. That all things are inclusive, proper, right. There is one truth, you say. There must only be one truth. Oh, really? So that means the truth of the other that gets them to the same place is wrong? Or there are a variety of truths that suit those human beings and those cultures who wish to do what they do to get to the same finish line as you. Wars have been fought, many lives lost over the one truth bias. So much singularity is there that you're even aware of none of it. It simply is your life. There are so many ones, there's so much singularity here. In this one life of yours, there really is not a concept of reality that you've lived before. Oh, you profess it. But you don't feel it. Part of my partner's teaching in these days has been for you to feel it. To get to a place where you will acknowledge the Akash and start understanding that you are eternal in both directions. That goes against the bias. You move only forward, not backward. My partner brought up this today. That almost all the religions on the planet believe in the afterlife and very few the forelife. Something that makes no sense whatsoever. It is the bias, is it not? And here you are looking at this. You've got to get around it. You have to begin to acknowledge that there is more than singularity starting right with who you are right with who you are. In the last two channelings that I have given, I have even brought into focus how singular your science is, how proud you are of the scientific method, which is singular. It is the physics of Newton, the physics of Euclid, the physics of Einstein, a kind of physics that sets up universal laws that are static, empirical and therefore they always work the same no matter what and you proved them over and over haven't you and there is no doubt that these things work and so why should I bring this up and I'll tell you because they only work in 3D <laughs> nothing you have studied in the physics that you are so proud of works in a quantum state nothing the quantum state has its own rules and they are variable this is where it gets a bit confusing. Is there such a thing as physics that is not empirical? Yes. What about a physics that creates the universe all at once? In less than one second. Greater than the speed of light. Where everything occurs together a dimensional shift so grand and so great it leaves a residue for you to measure and you cannot get a grip on it you call it the Big Bang and you try to justify it in 3D and you never will well, that is not how the creation occurred and what we have said before is that the creation is still occurring you have labeled it the expanding universe something that seems to push the stars away from each other. What if it was still being created? You will not give any kind of credence to a physics that would be itself biased because physics has to be empirical. 
Or how do you explain empirical things like intelligent design? How do you explain physics against all odd that creates life all over the universe? It has to do it because it's biased. It's biased for life. How do you explain the Gaia effect? We have brought this to you before. This is an effect that as long as the earth has been here, it has tried to create life over and over. Sometimes it destroyed itself and reemerged to create life again. And there are those who say the actual creation of life is against all odds. Every time, against all odds. Every time, every time. We have said this to you. Wait until you find the life on the other places. Microbial life in this very solar system, it's everywhere. All you have to do is go out and find it. It's there. Created for life it is. This is against all odds and a kind of physics that is biased. It's biased against your bias. Do you see that? You look at it and you don't like it because it isn't 3D. You don't like a physics that does something with an agenda. We call it physics with an attitude. And you don't like that. It flies in the face of an empirical three-dimensional straight line, you see? Wait till you discover it. It's all around you. It's quantum. So I'll give you the truth one more time so that you can think about it and analyze it. And I do this carefully and slowly and with great love. Repeating what I have told you before about what happens when you're born. Giving you an idea of who you are that expands who you are. You are not singular. Oh, precious one, listen to this scenario. Listen to it again. You need to hear this. Quantum at the core, you are. Only a piece and a part is activated. The 3D piece, and it creates a bias. When I say goodbye to you on the other side of the veil, I am looking at a glorious piece of God. This is a tremendous piece of God. The whole idea that God is in pieces is 3D. But how can I say something to you that you cannot understand? How can I tell you that you are God, exist as God, and break off? Because the first thing you will say will well, how much breaks off? <laughs> and that's a 3D question, do you see? It's a biased question that has no answer because there is no how much in a quantum state. You break off from what you call spirit and you come to earth and you've done it over and over and the process is amazing. What is amazing is that you would even do it. For you take the majesty of you and you put it into pieces. Do you remember Elijah? The beautiful soul, so wise. And his writings have given so much. Some of the core principles. And it was time for him to go. Do you remember this? Reported by Elisha. And Elisha said that when Elijah stepped into his Merkabah, that it was the light of the sun itself. Like matter meeting antimatter today, a light so grand, so great, you can't look at it. What Elijah had done is to step into ascension, real ascension, moving into his higher, his higher self where all the parts came together and a piece of God was seen for a moment on the planet. It is the story of every single one of you. Those who have near-death experiences see the light and they move toward the light. And now I'm going to give you information that I've never said before. You need to know what the light is. Because in 3D you're moving forward, aren't you? And the light is God and you're coming close to God. That's not the way it is. The light is you. <laughs> you come close to coming together again and you can hardly wait. Let me explain this. The point at which you're born, you break into pieces. Coming from my side of the veil as this, as this splendorous piece that you are, of what we call creation, 
you break off half of you half of you stays on my side of the veil and it's called the higher self but it's you and the rest is split even further dozens of pieces and parts of you which cannot be calibrated or measured for they are quantum stay on the other side of the veil in a state that is what you would call guides angels it's you there's many human yous minus the higher self with me and the whole reason is co-creation and now I have given you yet again the secret of co-creation is not what you do on the planet but how you connect to the rest of you on the other side of the veil the healings that you wish to have in a corporal body are created by coming together with the, some of the pieces that are not creating what you have called quantum miracles science medicine they all give names to these things how about this one spontaneous regression that's the name for a complete and total misunderstood energy one that cannot be identified which creates miracles in a body where they were not expected who expects miracles maybe you did it's happening all the time this beautiful self of you from this side of the veil which is mine splits off the higher self goes one way all these pieces and parts staying on my side and then it splits out there are other pieces and parts and you call them angelic helpers that come in and sit with you they surround the bedside when you're born and you, of course, are singular. So by the time you get to identify them, they become your guides. Do you see where I'm going with this? And you give them names. Never understanding they're you. Pieces and parts of the grandness of you sit beside you all your life, waiting to help you. And that's why they feel so good they feel so good and when they rearrange themselves and the energy shifts or they leave for a moment and you cry because what you've lost is a piece of yourself and so many here have had that experience and now I'm giving you the truth it's not friends that you're missing it's you let me give you the big one you come into the planet you're born you arrive you live for numbers of years until you are old enough to miss you. And you start the search, and most of humanity does, to find the rest. And you search in synagogues, in churches, in chapels, in cathedrals, in mosques, all your life. You're not looking for God, you're looking for what's missing. What's missing is the higher self. What's missing is the pieces you split from. This is what you miss. You miss the togetherness. You can't explain it. It is cellular. It calls to you. There's more. It calls to you. There's more. Find it. Who is the creator? Where is the creator? Why am I so alone? I have identified it for you. The whole reason the earth searches for God. Isn't it odd that they all do? There's no question there's a God to most of the earth. 90% believe in God. They miss what has been separated. And you arrive only a part of who you were. You could never contain the whole because then you'd be looking at what happened to Elijah. You cannot carry the whole energy. And you arrive with only a piece in singularity in 3D and life begins. That's the story. And in ancient days, when all of this started to occur, the pieces and the parts of you, which you call cellular structure, DNA, were far more quantum than they are now. 
you changed it. You created the energy you wanted to change on this earth. And slowly, and we have described it before, a fully quantum DNA got reduced. You forgot things. The search was still there for God. You had far more control of your life process in ancient days than you do now. Those stories of the ancients living so much longer. Abraham. I will give you his lifespan. It wasn't 900 years, but it, it was more than 130. More than 130. And he's fairly recent. <laughs> Can you imagine what the ones before him had? Lifespans of hundreds of years indeed were real. And in your singularity and the smugness of your science, you look back and say that they must have counted years differently then. Because today we have modern science and our lifespans are increasing. And back then they didn't, therefore they only lived 30, 40 years. Oh wow, 3D of you. You don't see it. Your bias is so complete you can't even imagine it. That a human being had, had a quantum biased DNA. <laughs> One that knew how things worked. And that is the beginning of the teaching. Now that I have exposed what is and what isn't, let me give you a few hints. This is practical. How do you start to become quantum? Cry and I want it. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. We feel it is needed. It is reasonable. We know that it's necessary to change the paradigm. By the way, just to keep up with the children. <laughs> they come in quantum. They come in differently than you did. Less linear. Did you notice? They're conceptual. That is very quantum. They see issues in concepts and not in a straight line. Imagine children who can see parents' problems and comment on them. <laughs> That's a conceptual child, is it not? A child that sees what it is and is not afraid to comment. A child that goes to school and sees only linear things and has a conceptual mind. A child that sits in a classroom and is being hand-fed the facts and the figures of things it already knows because it sees the whole picture. It has the concept and yet it feels that the adults around them say that they have to go through three more years before they learn it and they know it. <laughs> what would you do? If you were put in that situation today at work, I'll tell you what you'd do. You'd quit. You're not going to go through that. Well, a child cannot quit. And so they do the next thing. They turn inward. Or they turn outward. They either act out or they go within. And you give it labels and you give it drugs, don't you? Never understanding that this is a quantum child. You understand why you have to do it. Here is number one. This is number one. You're not going to get anywhere with this unless you begin speaking to your cellular structure. It's about time your consciousness spoke to you. And you feel that this is odd and strange. And if anyone sees you doing it, they will agree. Let me tell you why this is going to work. Because human consciousness is the most quantum thing you have. It is outside of the purview of three dimensions. Your consciousness can move mountains. Your consciousness has created the shift. You're not aware of it. 
Your consciousness is powerful. So now let's put it to work on you to change a very paradigm daily. You're going to have to speak to your cellular structure and give it commands. And it's going to be shocked that the boss has started talking to it. Because it never has before. And I'll tell you why it's going to work. And this is a review. This is science. If you were to peer into your DNA, you would find that only 3% of it does anything at all regarding the creation of a three-dimensional attribute or scenario of human gene production. Over 30,000 genes of the human body are all created by less than 3% of the chemical makeup of your DNA. Well, what does the rest do? It is quantum. It is there for everything else. It is there for the healing that you're asking for today. It is there and was given to you early on to contain all of the Akash. That is to say, every lifetime you've ever lived, every attribute you've ever had, every personality is in the Akash. And by the way, it's available all the time because it's quantum. And science sees it and doesn't understand it, but acknowledges it's there. 90% of your DNA is not structured. It follows no kind of symmetry. And science cannot attach any, any usefulness to it. It's time that science saw what it was. A quantum instruction set for the 3%. More than 90% of you is ready to accept instructions from you. And it's not going to happen unless in 3D you start giving it instructions. Wait, wait, well, what do I say? <laughs> Humans are so funny. It's like being introduced to a stranger, isn't it? <laughs> consciousness meets cells. <laughs> cells meet consciousness. Take a look at each other. Aren't you funny? Pretending that neither one of you exists. Well, it's time you melded this every day. Practice it. What do I say? I'll give you a good beginning. Dear cellular structure, I love you. Thank you for creating the perfect life that I am on the planet. Now let's get some things straight. I'm in charge. Consciousness speaks to cells. Number one, I'm in charge. And the cells will sigh a breath of relief and they'll say, we knew somebody was out there. So we can, we can stop just doing what we're doing, right? Now we can have some instructions. What are your instructions? then you start and we want you to start activating the quantum parts that you all have. Now don't tell your cellular structure what to do because you're in 3D. Instead, become quantum and we're going to discuss this now and this is so difficult. Cellular structure, we wish you now to capture the attributes that only you know are needed for healing, for life extension, for the stopping of aging, for joy, for peace. Become quantum every single day. Address your cells as they are your best friends. Don't miss a day, don't miss a time. And in your quietest moments, thank them and love them. I'm telling you, this is going to make a difference. This is the human being acknowledging their quantumness even though they don't understand it and asking for help within their own cellular structure. And to some it's going to be laughable. This voice, this recording, this transcription when seen by some is laughable because it's out of the paradigm, is it not, of anything you thought you'd ever need to do or anything you ever thought was possible. And yet you cannot deny that you've got 90% DNA that seems to do nothing. Well, you're smarter than that. It does a lot. 
and it's ready to receive consciousness instructions from the boss. And that's number one. Number two, metaphysically, stop thinking of a management scheme or any kind of hierarchical system of God. You've got high councils, commands, and archangels. And all of them have appropriately been given so that you can understand the importance of them all. Because you're in 3D, because that's how you think. Someone's always in charge of you. You've got to start thinking differently there. There is no one in charge but you. Not only are you in charge of your own system and your own body, you're in charge of peace on earth. And this is quantum at its best. That is to say, this is a managementless system. God with God, the pieces and the parts all know each other. You're a family. You've already got it figured out. As you pray, as you send light, Don't think that you're sending it to, to somebody upstairs who's going to handle it for you. <laughs> a manager up there, or there's a high council up there, I'll take care of it. All you do is send it to them. It's not going to work. I want to introduce you to the highest council on the, on the earth, and that's your cellular structure. Consciousness is king, the peace of God inside you. There's nothing grander, there's nothing greater hard for you to imagine a system without management. You say it can't work. I'm going to tell you this, a prophecy will occur right now. <laughs> there are those on this planet working on managementless systems, that is to say no hierarchy, hierarchy whatsoever in factories. And you'll say, oh, that's going to be cute. <laughs> that's going to be chaos. Everybody's the boss. And I'm going to tell you that you're moving into an energy where that's going to work. <laughs> Watch for it. You heard it here first. Oh, it won't be the one that you have, but it's going to be a hint. This can work. Think of that. No structure. Nobody's in charge. No boss. Everyone shares. Everyone is in charge to the degree that everyone knows what to do. That's the best for the best. I'll review one now that you have to hear yet again. You're going to have to get a better grip on the timing of God. Never again can you ask this question. God, what am I supposed to do now? Because that yells that there is a timeline, doesn't it? Because God doesn't see you in your timeline. God sees the concept of the complete picture. When we look at you, we see everything that potentially will happen to you in your life. If we give you advice, it's so that you can apply the advice when it's time. Not when you hear the instructions. And yet humans go to the other side, get instructions, come back and try to give, give, give it their all right then. There are so many of you who have received flashes of intuition you're supposed to write a book you're supposed to start a healing center you're supposed to do this and that you come back and try it and it fails falls on its face nobody's interested you can't find funding not only is this striking a chord in some of those in this room but everyone who's hearing this <laughs> this recording I'm telling you you don't get it Spirit delivers instructions about your future and the potentials in a way that you're then supposed to take and apply it in a quantum way. You're supposed to come back with the joy that this is in your future and doable and then you come and wait for the synchronicity of it and then you apply it. And it might be 10 years because spirit doesn't see your time like you do. And you're so singular, and we've said this before, that what you do with the information is so amazing. You take this beautiful information you're given, you apply it at the wrong time, it doesn't work, so you hang it on the shelf and you put it in the department that said, tried it, won't try it again, it's not good. 
And that's where it hangs. Oh, it's so good, it's so precious, it's so you. And you hung it in the closet in the compartment that says, don't touch this because it doesn't work. Oh, how singular. Do you see the bias at work? Do you see the singular bias at work? Somebody may come up to you and say, remember that idea you had a few years back? It sounded like a good one. What happened? Well, I tried it. It didn't work. Well, why don't you try it again? It didn't work. Oh. Oh, how singular of you. How 3D of you. Such a precious thing. I'm talking to somebody in the room now. It's time to trot it out and do it again. And you know what I'm talking about. God doesn't give you these kinds of things for you to hang them on the shelf and discount them, dear ones. They're beautiful. They're pearls of wisdom and joy and beauty. They're going to help other people. Why are they in the closet? Just because you didn't understand it? So the practical instructions are these. I've got two things to say about this. Number one, if you're given instructions from Spirit, if you have insight, Weigh the appropriateness of the timing of it. Period. Do it when the synchronicity is there. Push on the doors and when you see the funding, when you see the interest, when you see consciousness start to move toward these things, you're ready to go. And they'll work. That's wisdom. That's quantum wisdom. And here is the other one. This is a bit too quantum for all of you. <laughs> Dear Spirit, when am I, when am I going to move into the things I'm supposed to do? <laughs> oh, how 3D of you. <laughs> and that is a question constantly asked. I'm ready to move to that thing that I'm supposed to do. That thing you're supposed to do, you're doing. Can you take a moment and celebrate what seems to be being stuck. Because Spirit doesn't see it as being stuck. You see it as being stuck because you do not sense a forward motion in a biased 3D. What you don't see is so beautiful. A quantum energy that you have created because of your insight, because of your light that you share with others, because the love that has increased in your life, exponential it is. Planetary it is. Felt by all it is. Going into the mantle of the earth it is. It's why you exist. And you sit in front of spirit and say, when am I going to do what I came for? And the pieces and parts around you, which you call angels, wring their hands and go, can't you see who you are? We love you so much. Can't you just stop for a moment and say, blessed is me. <laughs> for I'm doing what I came for. Which is to stay at the workplace, perhaps, and create an energy that nobody's going to do there. To stay in a family, perhaps, with my children and create energy nobody had before I showed up. The children are going to see it. The children will see it first. Far more perceptive than you think they are. To know that mom has changed. Dad has changed. You've got, you got to get a quantum handle on time. And you have to live in 3D. At the same time you do this, this is difficult to be content with the light that you have not what you thought you might be doing the book that never showed up the healing center that never occurred and we sit there looking at your light magnificent love that you have for humanity the non-judgmental part of you that has changed so much I'm talking to individuals in the room and you know I am how much you have changed what do you call that what do you call that and now I'll give you the final one. It's difficult to talk about. There is a linear bias in some of the most sacred areas of your metaphysics. And this is going to be a hard one for you to release and let go of. We don't want you to release it. We want you to understand it. There's a bias in what you think about energy. Think about it. You assign energy 
in a linear fashion to specific things. Let us take numerology, for instance, a very high science, but it's not quantum. It helps you a great deal. We've spoken of it. We teach it. Each number has a singular kind of energy to it. How singular? Do you see what I'm saying? How they combine becomes more quantum. But still, you're assigning linear numbers to energies. That is a 3D process. It works. It's good for you. Very metaphysical. You're not going to like the next one, for some of you live by these things. The energy of the stones, the crystals, the rocks. And you compartmentalize them. You actually put them in bins. And you look at one kind and say, well, this kind will ground you, and this kind is good for your consciousness thinking. This one will help you to think higher. This one will do that. This one will do that. And so you grab a handful of all of them, put them around yourself and say, good luck. <laughs> and you do, you know you do. I've been, I, I've been to your house. <laughs> How singular of you. What if there existed a substance it was so quantum, listen, that when you put it with you and owned it, it knew who it belonged to. And that it would create energy that you needed. And you would have no idea what it was doing. But it was such a friend that you knew it would be doing the right thing. Oh, that would be a quantum energy, wouldn't it? It exists. And many don't even know about it. It is just too new. It's not something you've really investigated. And I will tell you about it again because there are those in the cryon work who knew all about it. It's called tachyon. It seems to be simple colored glass with no attributes of energy whatsoever that are natural to it. And you'd be right. It has to start that way. It has to start neutral so that the tachyon energy can be imbued into that. And there it sits, neutral, feelable by those who know energy, but ready with its color, with its beauty, to be owned by a human being. And when the human being exchanges energy for it, it owns it, the human being and the, and the piece of glass are one, and it knows who owns it knows your name, knows your light, knows your vibration and works on an energy scheme that helps you. As you learn things, it moves on to other things that will help you. It is not a strong, strong energy so much that, you, that, that it would bother you. It is sweet energy. It is gentle energy. It is modest energy. But it's quantum. Now there are other energies on the planet being developed like that. Some involve pendulums that actually create energies because of their shape that refer to the actual Merkaba. Look for these kinds of things and in their quantumness look for this that there is no singular attribute when you ask what does it do? And the one who knows will say, whatever you need, that's quantum. Now, as you start to cross into meditation, and, and with this we close, when you start to cross into meditation and you're crossing the bridge, you're going to meet an energy there. Don't define it. Don't decide what it looks like, what it feels like, what its name is. Just don't. Quantumize that door you're about to open. And don't ask, what are the steps? What's going to happen? What should I? The shoulds 
are 3D. You're going to open the door and whatever is on the other side is going to love you. And you're going to be able to say to that higher self that is there, greetings, I knew you were there. And it's going to say to you, are you ready to activate your DNA in a quantum state? And that's when you say, do it. You don't tell them what you need or how the healing is going to be or what happened the day after yesterday that irritated you. Because this is an energy that's been with you. A quantum energy knows what you want is a God energy. It's a universal energy. It's the kind of energy that creates intelligent design. It's an energy that puts things together, that's confluent. That is to say, it's like a glue. It's an energy of peace. That's just the beginning. Attributes that you may never have expected, given in love today for a very astute audience. And so it is.